And then what happens in either case is exactly this, almost inevitably. Cain was wroth and his countenance fell. Well, you know, you meet, and I, people like this write to me all the time. I've seen many, many of them as clients. You know, they say they're 20, not so often, 30 more commonly, sometimes 40. Their lives haven't gone well. You know, they're in a pit of despair of one form or another. And not only are they in a pit of despair, but they're extraordinarily angry about it. And God only knows what they would do with that anger if they had the opportunity to give it full voice. Right, you know, one of the things I've always thought about Hitler is that, you know, people... You have to admire Hitler. That's the thing. Because he was an organizational genius. You know, the thing that doesn't stop people from being Hitler, the thing... People don't, people don't refuse the ambition to become Hitler because they don't have the genocidal motivation. They don't follow that pathway because they don't have the organizational genius. They've got the damn motivation. And you know, if you take a hundred people randomly and you talk to them and you really talk to them, you'll find that 5% of them would take their vengeful thoughts pretty damn far if they were just given the opportunity. And in fact, they do because they make life miserable for themselves and often for their family and sometimes for anybody they can come near. And then maybe another 20% of people have that bubble up in them on a pretty damn regular basis. So, you know, you can have some sympathy for Cain. If you don't have any sympathy for Cain, then you're not... See, Cain and Abel also, they don't just represent two archetypal types of being. They represent, so it's not like you're Cain and you're Abel and you're Cain and you're Abel. It's like you're half and half and you're half and half and you're half and half. It's something like this. This is two different potential patterns of destiny. And you, you don't manifest one purely and the other zero. It's like, you're, it's, it's like the line between good and evil that runs down the human heart. It's exactly the same idea. And maybe you're more like Cain or maybe you're more like Abel, but there's still a little Cain in you no matter how Abel you are. And maybe more than a little and probably more than a litter, little. And if you watch your fantasies, which I would very much recommend, you'll find that they show you dark things about you that will shock you if you allow yourself to be conscious of what you're thinking. So it's a good time when you're having an argument with someone, especially someone that you love, to just watch the pictures that flash in the back of your mind. That's part of let's say, coming into contact with what Carl Jung called the shadow. And the shadow is the manifestation of Cain. That's a perfect way of thinking about it. And one of the things that Jung said about the shadow, because Jung was not someone you mess around with lightly, he said the human shadow has roots that reach all the way to hell. And Jung meant that. That's no metaphor for him. Now, he might not have meant it in the same way that a fundamentalist Christian from, from the southern U.S. might mean it. But I would say that Jung meant it in a way that's far more terrifying and also far more true.